Hey guys, so I'm doing a re-video and re-upload of my 2023 fountain pen collection. I owe it all to you guys to do this really well. The focus has been really bad with the previous video and I hope to make it up to you guys. So I always use an iPhone to shoot my videos and the iMovie app to do a bit of editing before I go and upload this on YouTube. But yeah, I've gotten feedback that the focus on the fountain pen collection was really bad. So I hope to make it up to you guys. And also for myself, I have to make sure that, you know, at the very least, there is good focus on the videos. So yeah, let's start with this Anya pouch, which still has my inked fountain pens. The first one is a Platinum Preppy. Fine nib, 0 0.3 mm, very good beginner or starter fountain pen. Great price, also writes incredibly well. And it's something that Hobonichi recommends for its users. The next one is a Pilot Petite one. This is available in a lot of bookstores. So at least for the Philippines, it's available in national bookstore. This has the fine nib. And it writes really well if you're not a person who uses, you know, ink bottles to refill. They come in these cartridges. You could just plug and play, I guess. Very handy. And I will just put them side by side. Okay. Next is my only Lamy Safari. This is the only Lamy Safari that I've kept. This is the collaboration with Line Friends. And it's in the fine nib. Okay, no, I changed it to extra fine. So I got a I got a nib for extra fine and I decided to keep it because this, I love line friends and this color brings such a sunny disposition to whoever holds it. Okay, next are my two Kaweco. So the first one is the Kaweco collection in the iridescent pearl. This has this wonderful, wonderful sort of rainbow sheen to it with the body and I just bought the clip separately so uh, one thing with Koeko's is that these are modular you can just build from scratch so what you just get is just a pen and a sample cartridge so it's up to you to buy the converter and the clip separately this one is the mellow blue I love the milky blue color and the clip is also purchased separately. If you notice, the clips are, you know, they have different designs. So it's not just your standard matte black, chrome, gold, and rose gold. It has designs. So if you're keen on details, you might find it enjoyable. Next is my only retractable fountain pen. This is the Platinum Curidas in the smoke blue. So it's a sort of demonstrator. And this is in dire need of cleaning. And I can tell because it's getting stuck. <laughs> oh, and this is in the extra fine nib. This is a Jin Hao 992, if I'm not mistaken. Very much similar to the make of a Sailor 1911. This is a freebie that I got and Maybe I guess that's why I, you haven't seen this in my channel yet. It's in the fine nib. It's a very nice, straightforward, cheap fountain pen. You can play around with it, actually. For my Jin House, that's where I experiment with inks, especially waterproof archival inks that, you know, may be harmful to m some of your more expensive pens. And speaking of Jin House, I have these Jin Hao 82s that look dangerously similar to pro gear from sailor and for this one the owner or the person that i got this from just played around with the parts so for Jin Hao, they don't really sell this pens as is so what you do is you just get a bunch of pens and then you change you just change the parts the cap the finial the you know everything and then just make it according to what you want so for this one it this was marketed as like disney princess inspired 
um, shades. So for this one, this is like the Elsa from Frozen. And then this one here is Cinderella. And then the last one with the nice red touch at the finial part is Snow White. So yeah, nothing really complex about it. Just buy a lot of gin house. They're very cheap. They're under 300 pesos and then just interchange the parts. And at least for the Philippines, it this was still sold at retail price. I mean, the same price. There's no premium. There's no markup. Basically, yeah, you're paying the same price. And then for the real Sailor Pro gear, this is a gift from my husband. This is a white with the silver trim and it comes in the hard fine nib okay he knows i love fountain pens and yeah i started he gave me a japanese one so it was a good choice for him okay i have two twisbees the first one the first one is a Twisby Eco in the smoke and rose gold trim. I have it in the broad nib. And as you can see, I use a shimmer ink from Robert Oster. This is stargazing. But I have already since let go of that ink because most of my pens are extra fine and fine nibs. And it's a nightmare to put glitter ink with those types of nibs. The next one is a mini. It's a Twisby mini in the demonstrator. So it's the plain transparent body with the stainless steel or silver trim. Also in the extra fine nib. And then I have two Mont Blancs here. The first one is a 145 Classique. This is the Le Petit Prince Aviator Edition. So as you can see, the resin is a dark brown shade with the silver trim. There's a star there at the clip. And you have your Mont Blanc logo at the finial part. So this one is in the extra fine nib. Also a gift from Hubby, and this is a wonderful, wonderful writer. The last Mont Blanc in this pen pouch is the Bonjour Weekend. This is a very great, this is a wonderful EDC carry fountain pen. It's very handy, as you can see. My hand is bigger than the pen. Um, this one uses cartridges. You cannot use a cartridge converter for this one. And it's also in the extra fine nib. This was on sale, 30% off. And I think this was also a display piece. So when I had this serviced, they actually replaced the clip part because it was so scratched up. And they did it for free. So this is my Bonher Weekend. Reminds me of a lighthouse. Very marine um, aesthetic. Um, yeah, reminds me of summer. I really like the deep blue against the stark white body. Okay, so that's it for my first pouch. My next set of fountain pens come in this Hobonichi pouch. This is the small pouch. It has a different configuration. It lays open like this, lays flat, as opposed to the accordion style of the Ane. And I have all of my fountain pens here in the zipped mesh part. The others are my pens. So let's take them out first. The first one is a Twisby Mini and the white and rose gold trim. This has the extra fine nib. I love it. Um, I've spent... <clears throat> this is not the original Twisby Mini that I got. Um, 
yeah, the first one I got was an extra fine. And I regretted that purchase. I looked for another extra fine. They didn't have one here in the Philippines. I decided to get a fine nib, which is this one. And I brought it to the Nib Meister for regrounding. So this one I had ground to an extra fine. The next one is a Twisby Eco in the white and rose gold trim. This is also in the extra fine. Love it. This is one of my older Twisby pens. This one is also purchased pre-loved from the fountain pen Palenque. This one, I also got this from the Palenque. This is a Vac Mini. This is my only vacuum filler pen. I love the idea of using this while traveling but i haven't had the courage to bring this with me on an airplane and yeah I, you ha you have to get the hang of using um vacuum filled pens but yeah i'm happy that i have this in my collection next is a diamond 580 this is just their demonstrator with the silver trim this is an impulse purchase they had this available in the extra fine i just purchased it because i'm a sucker for demonstrator pens <laughs> next is <clears throat> next is an eco t so the difference between an eco and an eco t is that the t has a triangular shape and the regular eco just has the hexagonal or the six-sided um, shape. But they're both ecos. <laughs> Price-wise, um, piston filling mechanism. Yeah. Next is a platinum car meteor in the coral. This is one of their more affordable pens from the Platinum line. I got this from an auction. We were helping a fellow fountain pen collector out. So yeah, this one I have this perpetually inked with carbon black. And yes, I need to have this cleaned. <laughs> Next is another Jin Hao, and this is in the ice blue. So it's white, but it has undertones of blue, and it has the gold trims. Comes in the extra fine nib, and I use this mainly for my waterproof archival pens, inks rather. This is a workhorse, really good pen for Jin Hao. And then my last pen for this pen pouch is the Mont Blanc. This is the 146 Legrand with the platinum trim. And I got the oblique nib for this one. I have this also inked with Mont Blanc Black Permanent because I use this to sign contracts, checks, um, legal documents, and all of that. So. You can use a permanent ink for those types of documents and I just really love the line variation that this gives for my handwriting. And those are the pens that I have in this Hobonichi small pouch. This pouch this leather case is from Shibui, so they're a local leather manufacturer. And this has my Mont Blanc pens. This can hold 12 pens. And they each have their own slots here that are adjustable. So depending on the size of the pen, you can loosen it or tighten it. So it makes your pens really secure and snug, especially when you're moving around. And that's why I chose this pen case for my Mont Blancs. So I have here my, my Sturstucks. So starting from the right, this is a 145. 
Yeah, this is the classique in the extra fine nib with the platinum trim. This is an impulse purchase, mainly because the Mont Blanc store in Manila doesn't really carry or have with them on hand extra fine nibs. But then when I realized that they have one in stock, I just decided to go for it. However, this writes a bit scratchy and I haven't had the time to bring this to the service center um, to have it, you know, polished or something. Or is it maybe because I'm a lefty, so I go against the grain of the pen or against the nib? Um, yeah, not sure. But I hope that if I write with it often, it would smooth out that scratchiness. Hopefully. This is the classique in the fine nib. So it's the fine nib with the rose gold trim. They also don't carry a lot of rose gold trims in the store. And yeah, that's one of the reasons why I got it. I think there was also a voucher or something I, when I purchased this online. So yeah, I do watch out for those. And then the last two are just Legrands. So aside from the Platinum, um, I also have the Black and the Rose Gold, which, which completes my trifecta of the Legrand Meister Stuck pens. This is the Rose Gold trim. I don't know if you can see the difference between the Rose Gold here at the right and the Gold trim on the left. Uh, the rose gold may be a bit more reddish in terms of its composition in the trim. So this one I purchased from the boutique, also in the fine nib. And then this one, the gold, which is more, more common, I guess, in the pre-love market. But of course, I encourage you guys to do your due diligence in authenticating these kinds of pens. This one I got from a reputable seller and this nib is in the extra fine architect nib. So I really like the line variation of this one. I hope to complete also my trifecta when it comes to the 145, but I haven't had, you know, the opportunity to source one from the fountain pen marketplace. So these are my Meisterstucks. And then on the other side are my others. <laughs> so this, these two slots house my Le Petit Prons and my Bonheur Weekend. This one is a 144. They don't produce this anymore, to my knowledge. And this is a gift to me from my dad. I had it reground to a right oblique medium nib, just so that it will, you know, fit with my writing style as a lefty. I haven't had the chance to really use this in 2023, um, maybe because I'm so scared um, since it's a gift to me by my dad. And this is a vintage piece. This is almost 30 years old. This one is another vintage piece that I really also haven't reached for. This is the MD320. It has this type of nib, hooded nib, I think. And this is also in the extra fine, but, you know, because I have a lot of other pens, I haven't had the chance to use this, really. And I got this for a good price at the Fountain Pen Palenque. I mean, despite it being a good writer, uh, it's, all, it's because it's missing this finial part here, but it doesn't really affect the writing style or the writing function. The last is my Legrand. This is the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle uh, Writer's Edition. This has the like stormy grayish blue uh, finish. I actually have a video, two videos about this one when I got it. It has more details. And I also had to experience their after sales. And that's why Mont Blanc is such a coveted luxury brand. When it comes to writing instruments, they are really good with their after sales. And this is in the fine nib. Really nice writer. Although it gets a bit heavy with 
time. So I don't write with this, you know, for long periods of time. And that's my Mont Blanc collection. This big guy right here is from Galen Leather. This is a 40 pen case. And I never thought I would be able to go beyond <laughs> 40 fountain pens. But here you are, and I love each and every one of my fountain pens. The first three pens that I will share with you are Pilot Kakunos, and I have them in different nib sizes. The one on the top is medium nib, although it writes like a western fine. The one with the white body and the yellow cap is fine, and the bottom demonstrator is the extra fine nib so actually out of you know all of my pens this extra fine nib from pilot is one of the really needle point type of um, widths when it comes to writing although sometimes I, I find it a bit scratchy so these are actually good beginner pens. the next one is a kaweko collection you haven't seen this yet in my channel this is called the Toyama Blue, and I got this from uh, someone at the Fountain Pen Palenque, although this is uh, brand new when I purchased it from her. I believe this is exclusive for Japan, but I really like this um, unique shade of blue, and I have yet to try this out. The next one is a Kaweco AL Sport, meaning aluminum. So the body is aluminum. It's a bit heavier than the usual plastic um, Kaweco collection. And this is in the Sakura Lucent Pent collection or collaboration. It comes in the extra fine nib and this cap or this clip here in the silver trim was purchased separately. I love this, but it tends to get a bit tiring for long writing sessions. And then these two, I got them for a good price. Um, the local online seller um, has a coupon and I got these two to avail of that coupon and free shipping. So the first one is the coconut. This is your straight up frosted white um, translucent color. And then the one below is called light blueberry and these are both in the extra fine nib and one thing i like about kawekos is that you can just purchase them with the pen and the cartridge and then just purchase the converter and the clip separately and then moving on to my platinum pens this is the 3776 in borgone so this is a wine red translucent uh, body so you can still see the ink uh, against the light and I got this brand new and I had this reground to a an architect nib so this has really good line variation although you have to write pretty big for you to see and appreciate the line variation and then this one is the 3776 Century Skeleton. Skeleton meaning it's a demonstrator. And it has the rose gold trim. And even the converter is also rose gold. And I really like that attention to detail. This one has the extra fine nib and one of my earliest fountain pens. I really love this. I, I was able to use this for a long time. I think about six months straight and then on the other side of the galen leather pouch are my sailor pro gears so the one on top is the black with the gold trim this is very work appropriate very professional looking this is in the hard medium and then this one is the white with rose gold trim this one has the hard medium fine nib so this one writes a little bit finer than the black one i love both they're both um purchased pre-loved from the fountain pen palenque for a good price so yes these are really reliable writers 
The next are my Pelican fountain pens, and these are my M605. 605 meaning their trim is platinum or silver. If it's in the M600, that means the trim is gold. So the top one here is the Anthracite. It's a Souveron Stressman in the fine nib. I really like this. It's a classic work-appropriate pen, although I rarely use it because Pelican nibs write a bit broad. The nib says it's a fine nib, but it kind of writes like a medium to broad. But I really like having this in my collection. The second one I purchased brand new from the Manila Pen Show is the 605 in the white and green stripes. So this one I was able to get for a discount. It was around 30% off and they immediately have it in the extra fine nib. And that was a sign for me to get this. I inked this up, but yeah, it hasn't been in my rotation for the past couple of months. But this is a good writer. The next one is an M400 in the white and a tortoise shell. So the body is still translucent enough that you can still see the barrel or the ink and the ink level against the light. The nib says it's extra fine, but it kind of writes uh, fine to medium. Uh, maybe because it is pre-loved, so maybe, you know, over time, um, sometimes the nib also adjusts depending on how much you use it. Um, I've also had this tuned, and I think I've had this ground to an extra fine. My last Pelican is actually my first purchase of a Pelican pen from the Fountain Pen Marketplace. And this is the M205. So this one has a steel nib in the blue marble design. And this one was customized. It has a custom grind to a cursive italic. So this one also has a really interesting line variation. But of course, you have to write big <laughs> so that you can see and appreciate the line variation. So this is really good for writing headlines, titles, um, for drawing banners, and all of that. So yeah, this is an interesting uh, nib. So I'll be moving to the other side of the pen case. And then these are my three Jinhao 82s. They're currently flushed and stored so i'm not using them currently this one is the um ice lagoon if i'm not mistaken with the gold trim this one has the extra fine nib really good solid writer the next one is a starry night so this is a deep midnight blue with flecks of gold glitter and shimmer on the body this kind of reminds me of the Pro Gear Nebula, but this is a tad darker. And then the last one is a demonstrator with gold trim. This one I haven't used it yet. I just thought it was pretty and I wanted to save up on shipping fee. <laughs> um, I hope to find another converter in the gold just so they would match with the trim. This one is kind of driving me crazy with the silver converter with the gold trim. Yeah. <laughs> my last Jinhao is the Jinhao 992. This is one of my earlier pens. The nib says here it's a fine, but it really kind of writes medium already. This is probably a well-loved pen. The next three are Twisbees. And the first one is in the indigo and bronze trim. This is one of my recent purchases. It's in the extra fine nib. I have. The next one is a cerulean eco with the silver trim, also in the extra fine nib. I also haven't used this. And the last unused Twisby eco is this straight up demonstrator with the silver trim. Also in the extra fine nib, another impulsive purchase. You know me when I see if it's an extra fine and it's available in store, I tend to get them immediately. <laughs> and on the last section of my 
pen case are my Twisbees. So these are my two eco Twisby in white and rose gold trim. These have the medium and the broad nib. These were all purchased from the Fountain Pen Palenque. I tend to use this for um, more shimmery, glittery inks because I rarely yeah, use them for extra fine or fine nibs. They will just be a pain to, to clean. And then my Diamond 580 Rose Gold with the white um, body or cap. And I have it in the extra fine and the fine nib. And my last twist B and the last pen in this pen case is the Diamond 580 in the smoke and rose gold trim. This has the fine nib. So for the 580 Diamond rose gold, I have them in white and smoke and both in fine and extra fine. Because that's how I roll. Okay, so that is it for this pen case. And the last pen that I will share with you is my Holy Grail. It's Dylan's box. I have an entire video about this pen. And this is the Roco Sky Blue. And it has the silver trim and the extra fine nib. This is brand new. It also comes with a converter. I got this from a reputable seller. And you can see that it's a milky blue color. But it has, you know, a shimmer underneath it. I don't know if you can see it under the light. But I hope this iPhone can give this pen justice. So there's glitter there. And yeah, I have an entire video about this pen and why this became my holy grail pen. So that is it, you guys. Those are my fountain pens that I've accumulated and currently have for my 2023 collection. I hope I've given this video justice. So thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Hope you can share in the comment section down below what has been your best purchase for 2023. And I look forward to seeing you guys in 2024. More videos of journaling, fountain pens, inks, hobonichi, and all of good stuff. So thank you so much and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys!